forward. Welcome to the second week of this uh, semester Zoom. We have a great night planned. I'll be honest with you, I got super excited and encouraged even as I was reminded of some things. But uh, you picked a great night to get on, and so I'm excited that you're here. And uh, uh, I just, before we jump in, uh, a quick announcement. Uh, I'm asking everybody, please, A, please get to church on Sunday uh, for uh, Pastor Mike. He's got a great word. But also, if you would take the time uh, to invite somebody, maybe think about somebody who's gotten disconnected uh, or something like that. And let's be real good about chasing people. I've been, uh, Kim Abram and I uh, were talking about some things today in staff meeting. I'm just burdened for the people who are drifting because, you know, once you get disconnected, it's easy to stay disconnected. And we have some people that have drifted. And I think some of it was unintentionally. I think some of it was life. Maybe somebody got offended or whatever. And, and who knows? But uh, I think it's good uh, to be chased. And so, and if it's not just one person like the pastor, you know, uh, he's supposed to be the one chasing that sort of deal. Uh, I would rather not uh, that not be the case. And so if you could help me do that, that would be most wonderful. Um, let's jump into tonight's lesson. Uh, like I said, I'm excited for it, but how many know reminders are important, right? Uh, we easily forget, or at least, you know, maybe I'm the only one. I doubt it uh, because so often uh, we have to uh, babysit one another. Oh, okay, yep, I see some faces. Yep, okay, guilty is charged. And so <coughs> I need reminding. That's why <coughs> I have people like Annette and Kim in my life because they seem to not forget and I write stuff down and I still forget. And so uh, I want to remind all of us of something that we talked about really how we ended last semester's Zoom that it's vital for leaders and leaders in training to have a God-sized dream. It's so important. If we're going to be on this and we're going to maximize Zoom. Zoom is all about growing and developing us as leaders, as godly leaders. That means we need to have a God-sized dream. And so if you're not sure what that is, or you know, if you're not sure if you have one, I was thinking about this uh, yesterday. The best step you can take is to be filled with a love for God and a love for his bride. Because I think out of that will flow a God-sized dream. If you feel like you're not sure if you have a God-sized dream or you don't have one or whatever, fall in love with Jesus. And you do that by recognizing his goodness, by recognizing the Bible says he was forgiven much, loves much. And so when you understand how good he is and how much he loves you, you fall back in love. It's not that you love him, it's that he first loved you, you know, and, so, and then also you fall in love with his bride. You begin to fall in love with the church, with the people that are in the church, even the ones that can, can get under your skin. You know, uh, if, I can, if I can take you because this is Legacy Zoom, so this stays here, even though it's on YouTube. I know not very many people right now are watching this. There's a term we use, and I'm looking. Yeah, none of you are that. Okay, so we're good. Kim, should I share it or no? Okay, she's saying yes. Um, there is a term that we used to use in youth ministry. We hadn't really used it uh, uh, here at Legacy, but we used to call it EGR. And if a student was an EGR, uh, that means extra grace required. And so I'm sure you have people in your life that are EGRs, that are extra grace required. And it was funny, in youth ministry forever, the kids that would drive everybody nuts, I had no problem with. But there were some, and it was really a small amount throughout 20 years, there were a few that, uh, like my leaders knew, they need to stay away from me because they're the kind of kids that'll ruin my day. I hate, I hate to disappoint you. Like, I know uh, the Kennys, you're, you're, I'm looking up in this part of my screen because you're right there. You're school teachers. You fully understand that there are kids that, that there's some extra grace that, that's uh, required. And so... Um, when you're filled with a love for Jesus, uh, you're going to be filled for a love for his bride, even the EGRs. And so we need to understand we're not just doers. And, and I want us to take action steps. I want us to fulfill that. But we're not just doers on here. We're also dreamers, but we're also not just dreamers and knowledge obtainers. We don't want to just have cool leadership lessons. We're also doers. And so we're not just hearers of the word, we're doers of the word. And so uh, again, taking it back to the end of last semester, what are your goals? 
You know, where are you trying to go? Are you, uh, are you just wandering as you find yourself near the end of February? Or are you intentionally trying to go somewhere in your life in ministry? I'm talking like living on purpose and for a purpose. Are you being intentional about pursuing your goals until they're realized? Or have you already kind of given up on some of those things, you know, that you, that you wrote down near uh, the end of the year? Have you written those goals down? Or is it just a few of you have? I know for sure, Donna and Cynthia, they wrote their goals down for sure. They are the action step queens of queens, and, and I love it. But now remember the uncommon 3%. Do you review them every day? And then uh, 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 are, you, are you actively engaged in them? Because understand, there's a huge difference between uh, uh, wanting and willing. I, I heard this on a Zoom call actually on Monday night. There's a huge difference between wanting and willing. Everybody wants to become a, a better leader. Everybody wants to grow. Everybody wants to improve. Everybody wants to make more money, wants to deepen their relationship with Christ. Everybody wants to walk by faith. Everybody wants to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Everybody wants to be an example. Everybody wants to lead other people to Jesus and live a life of prayer and live pure and live holy and all of that. But how few really do, honestly. And so it's primarily because they want to, but they haven't really decided to. They have a desire, but they haven't really uh, added their will to their desire. Does that make sense? And so we have to will some things. We have to decide some things, like really draw a line in the sand. Enough's enough. And at some point, we have to decide who we're going to be, and we have to decide how we're going to live, and then back that up with intentional action, because a decision is only the first part. We have to back it up with action day after day, daily disciplines. And so answering those questions, making those decisions, are going to go a long way towards being filled with a God-sized dream. And I want those of us who are on this call, I want us to be dreamers, and I want us to I'm talking overflow with massive dreams even in the midst of discouraging circumstances now I'm preaching to myself you know and so we have to dream and we have to be willing to draw the dream out of one another because once we're filled with a God-sized dream we're on the verge of a completely different life right and so we're on the verge of the adventure of the life of a lifetime and that's where I want to live I don't know about you. If that's you, put a one in the chat. I want to live that kind of, a, kind of an adventure because I've never been a go through the motions sort of a Christian or just kind of, you know, have a nice Christian life. No, I want to go after God with gusto and I want to see dreams come to fruition. Amen. Yeah, I see those ones. That's awesome. Well, listen, um, it's, this isn't going to be like last week. We have multiple uh, sharers, presenters tonight. Matt and Becky Kenny have begun a, a life group that I'm super excited about. It's called Chase the Lion, which is based on Mark Batterson's book, one of my favorite books I've ever read. It's the follow-up to In a Pit with a Lion on a Snowy Day. If you struggle with courage, if you struggle with dreaming, uh, not don't just get the book. Get in their life group. If you're not a part of a life group, or even if you are, they meet on Tuesday nights, and, and when they said they were going to do this, I, I was super stoked. And so uh, um, I'm going to have them share some thoughts. I just kind of gave them free reign. You share whatever's on your heart. You do your thing. And as you listen, though, uh, also allow God to fill you with some dreams because that's what he does. When I listen to people, you know God's talking to you. And so if you get even a little something, write it down. I'm going to be quiet and have Matt and Becky share. And so have at it. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we meet Tuesdays at seven and we've only had one meeting and I was unfortunately sick, but I heard some amazing things about it. Um, so if you don't have the book yet, if you missed the first one, you should still come. Bring your kids, we'll put on a movie for them in the playroom and they'll be occupied. Um, even if you don't get to the readings, come anyway, just to share and talk and support and just love. So uh, I will tell you that I'm already so excited about this group. I've read like the first two chapters and it's God's already speaking to me. He's already shown me like a dream, a God-sized dream that, that I need to have. But I will tell you that as soon as I realized this dream, the enemy just attacked me. It was like excuse after excuse after excuse. And I don't know if the enemy was putting excuses in my head or if he was putting fear and fear was causing the excuses probably a mixture of both but it was you're too old and or you're too busy or you're not skilled enough and 
And I almost just was like, okay, yeah, it's obviously not my dream because all these excuses came up. But I started to realize like God's word, he's there to help you through these excuses. I was thinking about Sarah. Sarah was way too old to have a baby, but God is bigger than age, way bigger than age. And Moses, Moses asked God because he was not a skilled speaker, but did, did God use Moses? Yeah. And I just realized that it was like, God is bigger than any excuse I could possibly come up with. And so, and, and I might not, I might have some excuses and you might have some excuses, but together we can realize that they're just, just noise in our ears that the enemy puts in there. I told Matt one of my excuses and he was like, that's stupid. <laughs> and I was like, okay, maybe it is. And I need someone and we need each other to tell each other that. And so, um, and so I was also going to say, if you don't, if you don't realize your dream, well, I, I like one of the, the quotes from the book. It says the best way to discover your dream is to help others accomplish theirs. Dreams are contagious. Be there to support, to, to help build up. Um, I mean, you could, you're going to discover your dream by helping others achieve theirs. Um, one of my favorite quotes from this book so far is in chapter four. So if you haven't got it, I hope you do get it. It says, we start dying the day we stop dreaming and we start living the day we discover a dream worth dying for. And it just made me think of Ephesians 3.20. And it says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. If you chase your God-given dream, then it's going to take you to a whole new level of living that we can't even imagine. That God is, it's so much greater. Like he has so many more better ideals than we could ever come up with. So I hope you come and join us and just figure out or chase your dream. Um, well, thanks to Doug and Becky, all the good stuff's gone. So, uh, we'll do our best with this. Um, I, I thought, because I'm me and I tend to be a little practical, I guess, is the, the right word. Um, I, I kind of thought of what, what foundationally is the intent of our group? What is um, sort of the goal? And, and one of the things that first popped up, and this, this kind of surprised me because as I've been thinking about this, stuff's just been, it's kind of like fire hose coming and coming and coming and, and coming from men's group and books, the other books that I'm reading. And it's coming from Chase the Lion itself. Um, it's coming from people uh, also in the church. Um, and one of the first things that came up is, is what is Legacy Church? And who are we? Um, and, and it was really kind of a, a, a throw down the gauntlet moment. Uh, when I thought of that, um, because I kind of have started to look at the church with different eyes um, than when, when I first um, joined. And, and the idea behind that statement is, do we as a church want to be nine to five Christians, punch our clock on Sundays, have a nice little happy Jesus time and then go home? Um, and, and I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely don't. That is not who anybody that shows up on Sunday is. And, and you just see it in, in everybody that walks through the door. Um, and I think that is really where this group, I, I think, is going to be huge. Um, as we started to, to kind of go through that, I, I started to think of, um, I want to make a phone call to Doug one day. I want to make a phone call to Doug and, and tell him we don't have room in our house right now. We need somewhere to meet. Uh, we need help. We, we need somebody with, a, with more house. Um, that is, is a dream that I'm having right now. Um, so uh, the first part of what we have is, is, is taking that first step and just daring to dream. Um, personally, um, what, what are the things you want to do? But also broadening that out. What, what do we want to do as a church? What do we want to do in our community as a community? What do we want to do globally? Are this tiny little church is our. We've got missionaries in Honduras. We've got mission trips to Guatemala showing itself um, because our little tiny church should not be doing that. Um, second part is sharing those dreams kind of becky hit on it um i believe doug hit on it um but but what if you hold all that stuff in 
well, you're almost kind of robbing other people. Um, because what if your dream sparks someone else's mm -hmm. dream? Um, or what if suddenly by sharing your dream, you're now surrounded by people with the same dream? I mean, just, uh, just imagine the, the change in our society that can come from, from a like-minded, Christ-driven group of individuals. The, you know, the church. Um, practicality uh, is, is a big thing with me personally. Um, and, and I kind of had some funny little thoughts and visions. We've, David's been in my, in my heart for a long time right now, the David and Goliath story. Um, and, and everything always kind of, to me, ties back to an identity, uh, understanding your identity. I went over this in the first group. Um, and I pulled out of Galatians 4, 6, and 7. And it says, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Um, and, and we talked about basically um, making sure you're rooted, like Doug said, falling in love with the word uh, and knowing who you are and whose you are uh, as, a, as a foundational part of, of your being. Um, and, and the idea that keeps coming back is it, it was actually kind of funny, but you know, everybody knows the David and Goliath story. He had prepared, killed a lion, killed a bear. Um, but he never, he didn't go out unarmed. That's kind of the, the mistake people make with the story. David knew exactly who he was. He knew was who was behind him. Um, and, and kind of the image that popped in my head was, um, a story of David who didn't know who he was. And, and it turned into this kind of silly story of, you know, some, somebody who is walking around and suddenly takes off on a tangent and goes a different direction, um, maybe challenges Goliath without knowing for sure who's got his back, makes mistakes. Um, so part of the practicality that I had was um, keeping everything Christ-centered, Christ-focused, um, making sure that that wise counsel is sought, um, making sure that your dreams are God sized dreams, um, that they're backed by God. And, and part of the group is creating that environment, making sure that um, you are prayed for, that, that we as a group are praying for each other, praying vision, um, praying fulfillment of those dreams so that so that when you have one of those dreams, there's not a hesitation of of is this something I should be doing? but it's something I must do. Um, it's a caring place and a safe place. Um, and those are points that are, are going to be emphasized each and every week. I wanna make sure um, that people know your dream, no matter how crazy it sounds, um, is gonna to be tolerated, accepted, not tolerated is a bad word, but accepted, appreciated, um, prayed about, built upon, and, and again, it's the idea of through community, um, I, I really feel like this church is about to go somewhere um, that it needs to go and it should go because of the people that are in it. Um, that, that idea of an unleashing um, is, is I really, really truly believe coming um, to legacy. So uh, we'll see you on Tuesday. Man, I love it. I love it. And y'all survive. See? See, Becky? <laughs> no, great job. Thank you so much. I kept writing and I was like, okay, all right, okay. And uh, I, might, I might put this book uh, scooted up a little bit because just a little bit, even going through my notes, because obviously, you know, we shared that, that we did this series um, uh, a couple years ago just a little bit of notes that that uh, uh, I, I read. Um, I'm just like, oh my goodness. And so uh, get there, get to that life group. Um, one of my favorite scriptures, maybe my all time favorite scripture uh, is Psalm 139, 16. You know, uh, it says near the end in your book, they all were written the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. And again, I'm always lifting out that God has a book written for my life. He has a book written for your life. It's his plan. It's his purpose. It's his will for you. See, God is writing his story 
through you, his story. He's writing history through you. And it all starts with a dream. You might not see, see yourself as a dreamer, but you are. You have dreams that you're not even aware of yet. I know I do. Because Kim always reminds me of, of those things. She always talks about being uh, conscious. Let's see, what is it? Conscious? No. Consciously, subconsciously competent. Is that right? Here, type it in the chat. I don't remember. But it's not, it's not, it's not consciously uh, incompetent, I don't think. But uh, something like that. Um, but you have dreams that you've never even thought of as dreams. Like if you're a parent, you have a dream. You know, you even gave your dream a name when he or she was born. And so God has a dream for your life. Think about this. And since it's his dream for you, that means it's a God-sized dream. Now I want to answer that question. What makes a dream God's size? It's, it's a dream that's beyond your ability and it's a dream that's beyond your resources, right? And so unless God does it, it can't be done. There's a God-sized dream because if it's a dream, hey, you know, I have a dream of having an awesome, you know, backyard with no weeds. Well, you can do it. It may seem impossible where it's that unconsciously conscious. That's, that's it. Very good. And so uh, unless God does it, it can't be done. Bottom line. And so uh, that's how God gets the glory. You know, he does things that we can't do so that we can't take credit for it, but he includes us and, and he allows us to jump in on the adventure. We can't do it, only he can, but we get to live it and we get to experience. That's the goodness of God. And that's also the why we can't dream small because small dreaming is a disservice to uh, an, uh, an infinite God. And so if God has a God-sized dream and a God-sized plan for your life, and he does, amen, do you think he's capable of bringing it to pass? Well, of course, no duh, without a doubt. And so settle that in your heart tonight. Uh, this is what I want to do. I didn't know what kind of time we would have. I really have, uh, I wrote down two action steps. We really have one action step, and I'm going to pray in just a minute. But if you, if you don't mind, I want to read. I, I printed out some of my notes from, from one of the weeks of, of uh, uh, Chase the Lion. And so uh, I may just read. I'm deciding what portion because there's two chunks. One is to pursue and experience your dream. It's going to take courage. You know, you're going to have to go beyond normal. That's what lion chasers do. Um, you might be one act of courage, one decision, or run one risk away from a totally different life. But here's the statement <clears throat> that just gets me. I'm going to put it on uh, Facebook and Instagram and everything else tomorrow. In every dream journey, there comes a moment when, we, when you have to quit living as if the purpose of life is to arrive safely at death. You want the gist of chase the lion, that's it. In every dream journey, there comes a moment when you have to quit living as if the purpose of life is to arrive safely at death. You have to go after a dream that's destined to fail without divine intervention. Most people spend their lives running away from things that they're afraid of. They forfeit their dreams on the altar of fear. And I bet you every one of us can think of something like that. And I pray that that's not one person on here moving forward. At the end of our lives, our greatest regrets are going to be our God-ordained opportunities we left on the table, the God-given passions we didn't pursue, and the God-sized dreams we didn't go after because we let fear dictate our decisions. Decisions. Most people believe God is real, but few people actually live like it. This results in a widening gap between their theology and their reality. Not us, not on Zoom. They allow their circumstances uh, to get between them and God instead of letting God get between them and their circumstances. Lion chasers measure everything against Almighty God, including 500 pound lions. There's a difference between scaredy cats and lion chasers. We our lion chasers, and if, and if you'll allow me uh, one more minute to read these four sentences, destiny isn't a mystery, it's a decision. Listen to that. Destiny isn't a mystery, it's a decision. A difficult, daring, and often counterintuitive decision like chasing a lion into a pit like Benaiah did. You fulfill your destiny one opportunity at a time. Of course, those opportunities often come disguised as 500-pound problems. Understand, destiny rarely has a scheduled appointment. I'm getting goosebumps as, I, as I'm reading this. What a book and what a life group. You never know when, where, or how it's going to knock on your door. 
More often than not, you don't discover your dream. Your dream discovers you as you faithfully do what you know to do. And even as you're faithful serving another man's vision, which will be another Zoom at another time. I'm going to stop there. Uh, thank you, Matt and Becky, for just killer words. Thank you for doing the life group. I believe, man, just as epic as freedom, honestly, uh, because if this unleashes people the way it did a couple years ago, uh, we're going to see exactly what Matt was talking about. I'm going to pray, and then I'll give you our action steps. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that uh, you would fill us and that we would recognize the God-sized dreams in our life, the, the history, the book you have written for every life on here and every life in our church and every life for every individual on this planet, God, that we would even recognize it in other people. Father, as we're filled with dreams, as we're filled with your word, as we're filled with purpose, we would even more easily recognize the purpose in other people and be able to identify it and speak it into them and believe it into them and love it into them, Father. Jesus, I pray that uh, as we seek and as we dream and as we uh, devour the book and as we get connected to life groups and things like that, that dreams would come alive, Father. Oh God, that you would clarify uh, our dreams, clarify our identity, God, in you, God, and that we would have the courage to not stop, the courage to continue on, the courage to overcome. In the name of Jesus, I bless everybody on here. God, we don't want to just be doers. We don't want to just be leaders in training. We don't want to just be hearers of the word. God, we want to be dreamers. Fill us with your dream and then fill us with the courage to live it out intentionally, day in and day out, moment by moment. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm not even going to worry about the uh, slide because I think everybody uh, will get it because I already see that uh, uh, the, the warning about running out of time is already on. And so here's more than anything. I had a couple, you know, really one, uh, decide who you're going to be and how you're going to live. You know, just, just, and really, you know what, write it down. That's not even the action step, but that's one of them that I had. I didn't even have a slide for it, but it was in my notes. Decide who you're going to be and how you're going to live. Instead of, oh man, I really want to lay hands on the sick. Decide you're going to start laying hands on the sick. Let Jesus heal. Decide I'm going to be a leader. I'm going to step in and I'm going to serve. And Becky even said, whose dream can you, I wrote down, whose dream can you help fulfill? Decide whose dream you can help fulfill. You know, it could be the dream of Legacy Church to help people experience, live, and leave a legacy, to help them know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference, and all of that. Or it could be even the dream within the dream on a dream team or in a life group or something like that. But get around some people and help serve and things like that. And also write down some goals for the next season. I put down year. But it's so easy to put it off until the fall, you know, until the very end of the year. But what about, what are your dreams for, for uh, you know, by the end of March? Write down two or three dreams for the end of March. And here's what I want us to do. Here's the, the final action step. Um, take 30 minutes within the next week. Again, 30 of the 10,080, right? Take 30 minutes to just pause and dream. You know, Kim challenged me with this. Uh, a few weeks ago to take some time to intentionally dream every week. And it could be being, you know, sitting still and listening. It could be maybe dreaming with a spouse or a friend, but just make a point to do so because this could change everything for you. I know, I know of a couple who, uh, uh, quarterly, I think it is, or, or twice a year, they go out on a date to a restaurant and they call it napkin dreaming. They get napkins and they just begin to write down their dreams and then they place those napkins where they can see them. And uh, they said last year that they fulfilled every single one except one. And so they went after it and they started this year. That's the main one. And they were stupid goals, stupid, ridiculous goals. And they started fulfilling them because they were doing the uncommon 3%. They were, they were writing them down and they were keeping them before them. And they were reviewing them daily. And so I'm talking these people uh, three years ago or five years ago couldn't even qualify for a loan for a house. They had to get their parents' help. And then now, uh, last year, they just bought uh, a home in Maui because that was, that was one of uh, this lady's dreams. And that's so otherworldly. Three years ago, five years ago, 
And now God has blessed them so magnificently. And a lot of it was, was doing exactly what we're talking about. They began to chase their lion. And they've, they've gone through some hell, you know, honestly, because it's going to take courage, but they blasted through. I'll be, I'll be quiet. If nothing else, go get this book, order it on Amazon, jump into their group on Tuesday night. And uh, 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 I think uh, Matt or Becky said, uh, make sure you share your dream, you know, but I would, I would say this, share it wisely. Don't just throw it out to somebody, share it with somebody who's going to help you. You don't need anybody who's going to doubt everything you got, or they're going to remind you of who you're not. Keep them out of that business. And so, uh, again, uh, Matt and Becky, thank you so much for, for a great night, for an encouraging word for me and for everybody else. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Matt and Becky, do you have any final thoughts, anything you want to say that you miss, you, not, you didn't think of or anything like that? <clears throat> I'm going to cover chapters three through five on Tuesday. Bam. Three through five. And, so, and the chapters are small, or else I wouldn't yeah, read They're very, very short. <laughs> I don't read books with long chapters. I yeah. don't. And so, because it gets overwhelming and discouraging. Maybe you do. You might be a great reader, but uh, I don't. So anyway, thank you so much for getting on here tonight, everybody, for real. Uh, let's go ahead and be.